r slash no sleep posted by you slash crimson bayonet i move to an apartment and there is a tapping sound coming from the kitchen i don't have much time left i am in a dire situation sorry i know i'm getting ahead of myself i am tyrell hawkins am terrified of being alone to understand the situation i will need to go back a bit to where it all started and maybe you can avoid this too it was about a year ago when i was diagnosed with agoraphobia honestly I never thought this would happen to me but ever since my parents died in a car crash I haven't been the same. It's really hard to buy groceries or even talk to friends when you are terrified that everything can kill you at a moment's notice. Anyhow, I was living at what was my parents' home since they had my name in the will. One week before I moved out, my best friend, Ives, invited me to stay with him since he could use a roommate and he knows how bad I get when I am by myself. I'll be okay Ives. I got this real swanky apartment for hella cheap. I said enthusiastically. I understand bro, just I know sometimes you need help coping and I've been your friend for how long? I think it's best and my rent would be even cheaper for us both I've spoke in a calm, caring tone. Tell you what bro. Give me two weeks and if I become a huge mess like you were thinking then I'll move in without arguing, I said in a very cocky tone. Ha 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 ha. Okay, bit bro. I know I will win this one. Anyways I gotta get to class man talk to you later. And hey if you need anything don't hesitate to call I've said just as cocky. Okay man I'll talk to you soon. We have been friends since kindergarten. Met in 1999 and we've been brothers ever since. Nearly inseparable even when the teachers gave us joint assignments we'd always be together. The only issue is he's an extrovert. You know, loves parties, and conversations and is super upfront and confident. Yay I was the polar opposite, I am a shut-in and an introvert but for some reason. Ives has always brought the confidence out of me. Not sure how or why but it's a reason I love him like a brother. I was moving stuff into the apartment and trying to get my gaming system set up. Something I have always been able to do is be social in gaming. I'm not sure what it was, maybe because no one can see me? I'm not sure but it is my comfort zone, something I can sink into and lose time. When I was setting it up I heard a loud knock at my front door. It caused me to bump my head on my table and yelled out ow oh, fuck and I'm coming one moment. When I got to my door and reached for the doorknob I had a sudden surge of dread. As if I were to open that door I would be struck. It's just the agoraphobia man you can get over it. I decided to look through the peephole. It was a woman with pure white eyes and a white wedding gown. This wasn't it the more I looked the more terrifying it was. I looked down toward her stomach, not sure if it was curiosity or just being frozen in fear, and her intestines were hanging out. Blood was everywhere. It wasn't much longer when I saw her looking into the peephole like she was staring at my soul. She cracked a slow but maniacal smile so wide her mouth began to tear and blood sprayed like a thin mist. She raised her right hand and started to pound on the door with each one making a thick and sloppy squelching sound. Bang bang, bang. I yelled. No screamed as loud as possible as I backed away from the door. What the fuck do you want? It was then it grew deftly quiet. H hello? I'm the neighbor and my name is Marilyn and I wanted to bring you a welcoming gift. D did I catch you at a bad time? I walked back to the door slowly with my heart still pounding in my chest. I looked through the peephole and see. A beautiful woman. I'm not sure what I saw but I hoped it never happened again. I opened the door slowly. Oh uh. Sorry Marilyn I have bad agoraphobia and didn't know you so it happens I swear I'm not an asshole, I said rubbing the back of my neck and smiling to deflect me acting like a total psycho. Uh. It's okay. Honestly not the first time this has happened haha. Anyways I got you some brownies and they were just made so I thought everyone loves a good brownie so here I am, she said a little nervously but with a pretty and calm smile on her face. Fuck yeah. Brownies are the best dessert food. I grabbed the brownie with childlike glee and she smiled as I took it. Well, I live right there, points to the door across the hallway parallel to mine, if you need anything just knock on the door, she said in a very light-hearted tone. Oh okay bet. If you need anything let me know but I apologize in advance if I yell I said nervously. She left her room and I closed my door. The brownie was amazing and soft. Rich but not too rich just perfect. It was later that night while I was playing an RPG. While I was being immersed in my cyberpunk world I was heard tapping. I was so sure it was just my game so I just kinda ignored it. The game was buggy so it could have been anything. Hours go by and the rhythmic tapping kept on. At this time it was getting rather annoying so I quit the game after saying and my suspicion was confirmed. This was coming from the kitchen. I got up and grabbed my baseball bat when I slowly crept into the living room. 
I opened my door very slowly and peered into the room slowly but making sure nothing was hiding or trying to hurt me. I scanned the room from left to right and didn't notice anything so I stepped out to look for what is causing it. As I walked to the kitchen the tapping got a bit louder and I was able to triangulate the reason for the tapping. I found it was under the sink thinking it was just a small leak. So I went to grab my wrench to tighten whatever was loose down there. I grabbed my phone to turn on the flashlight and slowly open the door. As soon as I opened the door I saw a hand the lady in white smiling at me. Contorted into impossible angles and tapping on the pipe slowly while staring at me. My heart jumped out of my chest and I crawled backward not letting my eye on this thing. It slowly pulled itself out with its bones cracking and flesh plopping on the cold kitchen tile. I threw my wrench at its head and it seemed to have stunned it long enough for me to run to the front door. I flung the door open and slammed it behind me. I got to Marilyn's door and was banging on it begging for help. Help me, please. I need help I yelled while panicking. She opened the door and said what the hell man. It's 3 in the morning she said upset and still half asleep. Come in and talk to me. I ran inside and collapsed on the floor and her door closed. I heard my door open and close. Okay man, 1. What the hell do you want? And 2. Why are you up freaking the fuck out at this time of the morning? I sat up on the floor and spoke. I. Heard tapping under my sink. But when I went to check on it, it was a woman who was twisted and broken. Smiling at me and tapping the sink. I was terrified so I ran to the closest person I know who could help me. That sounds. Like bullshit. But you seem to be scared and I was waking up anyways so wanna watch a movie then? Ah oh, by the way what's your name? She sounded upset at first but seemed to be friendly right after. Aya. I'm Tyrell. Tyrell Hawkins. Sure what movie are we watching? I am Marilyn Cobbler and we can watch something on HBO. Ever seen Our Flag Means Death? I looked with a smile on my face. There was something about her that made me calm like my friend. We sat there and binged the whole show and she fell asleep on my lap. I looked down and smiled and fell asleep shortly after. I haven't been this happy in a long time. Since my parents were alive. Anyways it was around noon when I woke up and she was making some food. Hey oh the sleepyhead is finally up. You want some eggs man? I make some hella good scrambled eggs. She smiled at me brightly. Ah uh, yeah. Sorry, I don't want to overstay my welcome I spoke with a shaking tone. Nah. I'm a loner and don't have a family so I got nothing better to do, she said casually. I started to laugh and said haha me too. So I understand. The day went by in Marilyn and I hung out together all day, we even exchanged phone numbers. I haven't been this happy in a long time. I needed this and I'm glad she is still around. But I digress, I went home and lay in my bed thinking about how happy I was. My heart began to race as we texted all night. I fell asleep with the phone on my chest. My dream was strange but didn't make sense. I woke up in a flat plane with like an inch of liquid. I couldn't see anything in any direction. It seemed to be one large white room with this black, sticky liquid that smelt of pennies. Could this be blood? I thought to myself. I kept walking around looking aimlessly. Not sure what I was looking for but I felt my feet burning when I looked down the liquid around my feet was bubbling and foaming. The sea was eating my flesh melting my skin inch by inch. I felt the pain shoot up my leg as I was still forced to walk. I couldn't stop walking and waiting. I eventually fell as the acid ate through my ankles and my bones snapped. My body kept on dragging itself further and further. The bloody acid entered my lungs and burned my corneas. Right before I died I sprung awake. It was 3 am when I woke and I looked around in a panic. Everything seemed fine, but something was off. I went to stand up and as soon as I did I crumpled in severe pain. Something just cut my Achilles tendon I flip over on my back to face my attacker and it was the smiling girl crawling toward me same bones cracking and snapping loudly. I kicked her as hard as I could with my limp foot over and over making no real changes other than her putrid blood spraying on my face. She just kept smiling as she inched closer and closer with a pair of sharp scissors. Suddenly Ives came to my rescue as he jumped into action pulling me away from the creature while I was screaming. He noticed I couldn't walk and carried me to safety and shut the door to my apartment. Bro, what the fuck was that thing? He said terrified. I don't know at all I kept seeing it and it wasn't until now did it hurt me. I thought it was all in my head, I said in a low tone trying to catch my breath. Marilyn came out and saw me and my legs bleeding. What the fuck is this? I'm calling the hospital she said hurriedly dialing a number. My heart was exploding out of my chest and the hallway began to spin. Before I fell, Marilyn caught me and lowered me to the floor. I could feel my consciousness slipping as she was trying to call the police. 
I felt the pressure on my ears as everything went silent and I heard Mary ask who were you talking to? As I was fading away, I was taken to the hospital that night. When I woke up there was a doctor there and they explained how after a week I should be able to walk again. I got out of the hospital last night with nothing going on. I got out of the hospital and Marilyn was there to pick me up. When she was driving me there I asked how did you know I was in trouble? You were screaming what was that thing and you had a pair of scissors in your hand. You seemed to be talking to someone but no one was there. Wait you didn't see Ives? He was there. She looked at me with an eyebrow raised and pulled the car over Ives was the person that lived there before you. He died from a heart attack only at three weeks before you moved in. How did you know him? I. Don't know what real is but I need help. I was laying down next to Marilyn that night and I got a text from Ives. Hey bro. I'm sorry but I tried to warn you to not live there. She killed me in the same room stay out of that room. I am sorry. I tried to reply but I got a message saying the number doesn't exist. I can still hear the tapping in the other apartment. I feel like it's getting louder and louder.